great. So now we're ready to demonstrate the new association rules module within Quiterion's DD Web. Let's just begin by exploring the data which we're about to use for this demonstration, which is real data taken from a New Zealand supermarket. Okay, so you can see here three columns with the department ID. This is a product name and the transaction ID here. So this one transaction, for example, you can see it's a transaction with bread, bacon needs, juice, biscuits. You'll notice that it's a mix of different product hierarchies, some higher up, such as baby needs, bacon needs, and some very specific products like coffee. This mix of product hierarchies does mean that it can lead to some trivial association rules, like if someone buys potatoes, then they buy vegetables. But it also means that it can produce very powerful rules as well, such as if someone buys meat, then they buy this very specific brand of sauce. So we'll leave the data as it is, and we leave it to human interpretation as to whether the rules are trivial or actionable. Let's just get a quick summary of the table so we can see how many transactions and how many products we're dealing with. So here it's saying that there's 4,602 discrete transactions. and 100 products. So it's a nice size data set for this demonstration. Okay, so let's go to the main screen now for running the association rule analysis. Okay, so I'm going to give you an explanation now of the fields that you see on this form. First one, transaction ID. Fairly obvious, it's going to be the transaction ID of the data set. Second, transaction item. We're interested in the products. Filter. Now this is when you want to apply a filter to the data set. So for example, we could run the analysis for a very specific department or we may want to run the analysis for a very specific year or a quarter. Okay, support. You can see by default that support is 10%. Support measures the number or proportion of transactions that contain all the items in the rule. And also confidence. Confidence measures how good a rule is at predicting the right hand side, or after the then clause, of the rule. By comparing how often the right hand side appears when the condition on the left hand side is true. But what is confidence really saying? Well, let's imagine that we have a rule if B and C, then A which has a confidence of 33%. In other words, when B and C appear in a transaction, there's a 33% chance that A also appears in it. That's to say that one in three, A occurs with B and C, and the other two times, B and C appear without A. So I'm going to leave the support as it is, and I'm going to lower the confidence to 50 in hope that we'll find more rules. This is where I apply filters for the rules. For example, if I wanted to find rules which only contain bread, or if I wanted to find rules that only contain bread and cheese, then this is where I would apply the filters. I also have here the option to constrain the range of the amount of items that appear in the left hand side and the right hand side of the rule. So, just to make demonstrating the rules a little bit easier to understand visually, I'm going to constrain the number of antecedent items, that's the items on the left hand side of the rule, I'm going to constrain the maximum number to 1. Now, I'm going to run the algorithm and I'm going to see what results it returns. Okay, so I'll give you a quick moment just
just to briefly take in the rules here that you see. There are some rules that do stand out to me. First of all, I can see that if people buy tea, then they're also buying bacon needs and biscuits. But perhaps a rule that's more surprising is that when people buy prepared meals, they're also buying breakfast food. Another rule that stands out to me here is that when people are buying canned fruit, they're also buying bacon needs, presumably because a lot of people like to use canned fruit within the cakes that they make. If we go back to the top, we can see that the results are ordered by lift, and that lift is what's affecting the cross-selling. Now, if it has a star, that means that there's a very good opportunity for cross-selling. So, what does lift mean exactly? Well, confidence, as we've already seen, tells you how good a rule is at predicting what's on the right-hand side of the rule. However, the items on the right-hand side might already be very common, so the rule might not be telling us anything. Lift, also called improvement, measures the power of the rule to randomly guess in the right-hand side. If the lift is greater than 1, it's telling us we have a very strong rule and there's a great potential for cross-selling. So I'm going to experiment a little bit more with the data we have here. So I'm going to go back to the parameters. Okay, so this time around, I'm going to up the support to 20. And I'm going to lower the confidence to 40. I also want to apply a filter this time. So let's just imagine that it's the summer, it's the World Cup, and everyone's throwing parties for their friends, for their family. So naturally, people are buying a lot more party food. So I want to know now, what other types of products do people buy when they buy party food? And that way, I know where to place products in my store to maximize revenue during this festive period. So let's just take a look at all the products. Order them by value. And we can see here that we have one for party snack foods. So I drag that onto my filter for the left hand side of the rule, which means that we're only going to see rules that begin with party snack foods. And finally, I just want to constrain the number of items that appear on the right hand side of the rule just to make this demonstration a little bit easier to follow. So now we're ready to calculate the analysis again. And here we see some very interesting rules. So there's some obvious ones. If people buy party snack foods, they're also buying soft drinks, confectionery, juices, but look here, it's saying that if people buy in party snack foods, they're also buying breakfast foods. Now, that may be for a number of reasons, but one that came to my mind would be that, obviously, if you have a party, sometimes people stay over, and thus they're preparing themselves for the following morning when they're going to make their guests breakfasts. Another interesting one, again, slightly obvious, but one that didn't come to my mind before, with when people buy party snack foods, they also buy tissue paper, presumably to clean up the mess that their friends are going to make. Now finally, so just one more thing that I'm going to show you, and that's something called the negative rule. So I'm going to put the support and confidence back to where it first was, 10, 50, which was the support and confidence for the last rule that we ran. I'm going to remove my filter here. I'm also going to remove the constraint on the number of items. And I'm going to run the analysis again. But before I do, I just think it's worth mentioning here that there's two stages when we generate rules. The first, and this goes on behind the scenes, is generating what are called frequent item sets. And the second stage is then withdrawing the association rules from these frequent item sets. Now, as always, in association rule analysis, 
it's the frequent item set mining that is the most costly in terms of time and resources. Extracting the rules is a relatively straightforward process. Now, what we do here is once we calculate the frequent item sets, we cache the results on the server. And so, provided that you keep the same support, you can then carry on changing the confidence, the filters, you can experiment, you can play as you like. The frequent item sets are no longer being regenerated. It's just the rules that are being regenerated. And that provides a way, way, way faster turnaround time between running the analysis and seeing the results. Okay, so I have my results again. But this time I'm going to organize by the negative rule lift. And here we see something very interesting. The, the top two products here, you can see that it says there's no opportunity for cross-selling. But however, if we reverse the association rule, that's to say that when people are buying cigarettes and tobacco, they are not buying bread and cake. Or when people are buying soft drinks and confectionery, they're not buying vegetables. We have some very interesting rules here as well. There may be a number of theories as to why this is happening. Maybe bread and cigarettes are conflicting products. But maybe it's because the bread and cake section is too far away from the cigarette section. And here we're missing an opportunity again. In this demonstration, You've seen how Quiterion's association rules tool can be used for very persuasive and actionable data analysis. With such a tool, you too can discover a pattern that becomes data mining legend.